snaking, and that same principle of coming in trying to get both behind the heads. Go ahead. There you go. So defending against this is a big part of Will stop you from just getting dragged down in the fight. A big part of that comes from lifting your chest and sternum forward. So having a good forward posture. If I'm here and he's yanking on me, he's pulling against my back, as opposed to if I'm leaving a little bit forward <coughs> on the neck, there's just not strength there. What you what you see is that my arms, if he bends forward even a little bit, see what my arms did? They just mm -hmm. cranked in. Now I'm in my power position. If he leans back, lean back, he extends it even more. Tell my arms are out straight just to reach his head. Now I'm trying to pull from an extended position. It becomes much harder for me. I had, you know, a guy with a decently strong neck, I can't do it. You know, maybe knee on the gut or something, get him to bend over. Um, so you see this, if somebody's trying to snake in and like I'm about to do it, or you do it to me. So now you start about to get my neck flat. See that? It looks kind of subtle. It actually makes a huge difference in the able to actually grab your neck. So it's just that. You see how I also lengthen out here. And now I, I just went away from time. I just kind of like made him extend his arm. And now I can extend this and drive in by three. So we'll just, we just put it in slow motion drill. This is, it's a mirror drill again. And you know, if you go into the theory of this drill, um, what you'll start to see is that you'll start to see this defense in here start to develop. So when he reaches, he, you know, for fighting on the axe or whatever, and he comes to slide in, I one <coughs> go back, so you know, I have an axe over here. If I don't have my arm to defend this, I just have my body position. That's, that's actually a lot of cases good enough. I can peel this down. If I can work in, then I'll work into the inside. But you'll see this. I'll catch him, like even if he tries to come up to grab my neck, see how I can catch this? And I make a hole. I, and I do this like Craig, you know, I mean, he's a big, strong guy. They can try to demand these positions, but if I can get this inside, even if he's got me crunched up, see how I open up my, my chest cavity and extend out, and I roll back. But go ahead and grab me that arm, you can feel it. So I can create this opening. Now I have inside line. Here, just look at now I have inside line so I can attack his head. So I keep controlling that inside line. I don't want to get it. I, oh, you'll see this hand fighting going on. So are you always trying to fight for that inside position? Or like, say you have a, like, a large punch shield on you, you're yeah. going to try to go over at any point, or you're always trying to come under? Okay, so you can. So, yeah, so as I called, like some of these are abstract drills. Yeah. Like right now, these are kind of abstract yeah. drills, and they, they might not always work depending on what kind of weapon systems you have. Yeah. But, what it's doing really is it's training your muscles and, and to fire off and kind of the principles of grappling and how to defend yourself. Yeah. And you can end up in that same position with that large shield from coming over top and being locked onto their head. Yeah. And it becomes almost the same thing where these same defenses are very applicable. So, so there's going to be variations depending on the types of weapons and what mm -hmm. he has. Um, but getting used to these defenses yeah. posting out your neck. You'll see that you're not even fighting somebody else to come to the door me somehow. I'm kind of crunch in here, and then I just need to butt, like create my, my shell, base out, and then I can create my defensive platform from there. So that's, it, it teaches all that kind of yeah. knowledge, and you can apply it as needed. Uh, so if we just do the drill, this drill, this is a training type drill. I'm coming inside, so we both hands my neck. I come inside, he comes inside, I control this arm, and I pull it down and try to relieve pressure off my neck. If I just let him sit here on my neck, he can do this, you know, like, you can call it like bulldog or whatever, I can just rip him around and really <laughs> gag with him. Uh, so you want to suppress that, and that's where you just come down with whatever weapon you have. You, can, you don't even need to grab it necessarily, you get your big gauntlets on there, you can just hook it. And like, see this outside roll? That relieves a ton of pressure, like it makes it very hard for him to grab you. So that's just a key to any kind of, if you want to suppress somebody's power, you just grab that, get that outside roll. <coughs> all right, so you, you have any other points? That covers a lot of them. Okay. So let's, all right, so I guess one point to think about when you're actually killing someone with this, the big point is getting their shoulders <coughs> off of their hips, that drive down. It's not necessarily lateral from here, it's then starting to shake and pull them around so you can spill them. And usually it's that side-to-side -side stuff that'll do people in. 
was the great basic attack from the front. And most people eventually be pretty comfortable defending it, but it is a pretty useful tool to at least initiate if you know how to finish. But yeah, if you look at the Muay Thai, going into actual, uh, actual moves, the Muay Thai, itself, like you can grab, see this, you know, people have big pointy helmets, ridges on their helmet. I'll go for those all the time. I'll try to grab that. Even if sometimes I'm on the outside, I, I like the inside track, so you don't always get him. Um, he might fight in, but I grab this outside track, pull it down. See how like, he's, I'm not pulling straight down all the time, I'm pulling him off base, and then I'm pulling him down. Because some guys are really strong, and you, but, so you can manipulate their head in here and pull in. I'll sometimes even push <coughs> uh, if I can. You can see having your head tucked down in a pretty crappy position. Being able to post and defend early is huge. That gives you a lot of energy. We can split up real fast and just try that for just a minute or two. And then we'll get to cycling. Try it. Try it. Try it. Try it. Try it. Try <laughs> if your whole plan is to just do that, then you're dead. But for some reason you're stuck. Now I said,
dad. But I think I'm upset on yeah. all my arms. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Even the breastplate. Yeah. So that's it. One thing I was looking at too is just uh, in the titanium and stuff. This guy was actually selling titanium legs. He said, I'll let you come down. They stopped to get my foot. Yeah, I'll find my head. What do you think about? What do you think about? They all got out. I don't know the guy lost. I mean, now I know the same thing. He was in the last year. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah
another kind of fun, fun warm up game to play around with your balance and power. Use There you go. You're supposed to keep that one foot. Yeah, this one foot plan. This, That's this is the plan. forward foot plan. The other one can move yeah. forever. The goal is to find a way to drive people off their center. Get your balance. So I like to think about balance really as there's that kind of hip and shoulders. You can either get the hips off, pull the shoulders down, or push the hips out of the way. A lot of these drills are attacking those same principles that, you know, when you're in a fight. Um, all right, just another. This is more like even street fighting. This is my favorite move. Um, for in some kind of position like this, and this works good for variations of this work well for sword fighting as well. His guards up here, I'm just going to come here, I'm going to clear this guard out, and I'm going to punch him on the point of the jaw. And you just, you know, you're not actually punching your buddy. But this motion is good for grappling, too, because we're here, I, I pulled this up by, now I've got different types of attacks on the back. It's another yeah. drill that. It's a good motion to, uh, and it, it, if you look at it body positioning wise, it's a mirror. We both can do it to each other. So you'll see a lot of foot position, it's positioning. Like, <laughs> position, <laughs> yeah, the first and pulls it. the guy offline. <laughs> um, okay, another grappling style drill. Uh, I just started working on this one. So this is working from a call, this collar tie. We have a, a forearm tie here. Um, You'll see a variation of this as a throw a lot of times. So you'll see the guy, especially if you think of the big guy, keep using collars, the big guy, hard to move around. If you want to get him, like if I just try this throw, or I just step in and throw, um, if it's a big guy, you can just set it down. Like it's just super hard to do. Uh, so generally, you can get smaller guys, you want to move. So you find, and this is just repositioning guys too. I can reposition them just by, by just mainstream turning. That but to use my weight efficiently, what I do is I lock this forearm to him. I just lock my arm in space. It's not really going anywhere. Watch my legs drop back. So he has to carry my weight. Now he rolls a little bit towards me. If I pull him towards me, now I can do that rotation. And I don't have to be as big and strong. So I start that momentum. If you watch guys sword fight, they'll be moving their sword. I don't usually strike like that. You get that momentum. It just started. And the same thing, it's the same thing with this. So it's a good drill to work on. We can just be going back and forth. I'm just going to try and drag him back and pull him. He does the same thing to me. And so it's just this back and forth. Actually, it's a really good workout. Your lower back is a <coughs> mid back. Uh, but it, it actually works as a great defense, too. If somebody starts to, me, if I start to try to pull and pull you back, you kind of Resist the same way. Uh, you get that feeling like some guy tries to beat a throw and he starts to roll you and try to move you. It's like, nope. You're, it'll develop your internal. You uh, feel your center balance. Yeah. When you're in that motion. Yeah. Uh, you start to feel when to resist, when yeah. to move. And, and all so things. if you then, once you do, just, I would recommend before you're used to this, just do the back and forth. You're just trying to pull them backwards. So it's this tug of war. It's like a tug of war. You think about when you tug on a rope, you don't just go, oh. You just basically lock into it, right? And you sit back and you drive with your legs and you try to drive backwards. It's Keep that very arm similar. locked out and comfortable. Drive with the hips, the legs, and that overall body posture. And the, the guys, um, your opponent is basically doing the same thing to counteract that. So once you have that down, you feel like you've got that you can throw in the twist and, and throw. Now this isn't always a throw, it's a, it's a spin. Just a reposition, like my buddy's there with the axe, this guy's trying to hide from it. And it comes here, I roll back, and now blast. Uh, Boom. 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 Nice throw. Um, I'll just go over this real fast, we'll go over this as an as a actual technique later. But I, I roll back, I step deep here. I don't, it's not a head and arm, it's off this collar tie. So it's, it's less of a committed move. I can get out of it. I don't get thrown down with him as, as often. And I pop this hip. See how it gets underneath his hip? I pull him into me. And I pop this hip. I turn. And this especially works good if the guy is like really aggressive. He's coming at you. <coughs> he's coming at you. Looks like that. Um. 
almost like Karai Goshi from Judo, sweeping leg toss. Mm. Except you're not lifting your leg, but yeah, it's the same motions is cool. Yeah, I think you could probably do the same. Yeah, anyone runs at you. Yeah, there's there's a couple Similar. of really good motions. There, the throws taking something right yeah. past you. Um, for this type of thing, I saw a good a good drill on this. Um, you can just a third person. You can do this all in a big circle too. Um, so I'll go up and I'll do this same. I'll do this drill. You can do this with other drills. I'll try this turn and I'll just let go. I go to the next guy. I'll try the same thing. Oh, that's like uh, Igor just was yeah. doing that in Mexico. He went around like seven or eight people. Just yeah. so some of them went the, down, some didn't. Just keep moving on. <laughs> keep tossing. Uh, you go to Matt. Step between his legs. This one. Just between his legs. Yeah, we'll go over the technique later. Um, yeah. But just do it like someone goes around and does it a whole bunch of times with a bunch of different bodies and legs. Okay. Yeah, but, uh, do you want to go to. Um, what do you think? Do you want to talk hip tosses at all? Just go in this straight uh, defense versus. All right, let's uh, okay. Let's we're gonna transition into actual moves now. And uh, should we maybe make, make people just do a little bit of that tug of war, sort of just the back and forth, so they do okay. something and then they'll pay attention more. Okay, sure. <laughs> let's yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we've been talking a bit. <laughs> let their ADD take over. For yeah. A bit. <laughs> um, the way can be at least half ego. <laughs> Yeah, 
So you can really pop, I mean, you can pop it pretty surprisingly. Like, the guy will come at you and get right on. And then they might get yeah, uncomfortable with stumbled. that and stumble and fall. Yeah. I, I had that and just stumble and fall into the ground. Um, so, but as a, as a drill, just to feel it, you can just block here. And see how my hips turn? Remember I was talking about how you dig in on the underhooks and you're turning your hip? It's the same, it's, again, it's the same, same much as a punch in somebody. I, Rolling this hip over to, to create this. It's like a punch, right? I'm punching him underneath his arm. <clears throat> so just to look at how it is, I'm here. And then we can just switch, and I can put it here. He can do the same thing to me. So he goes here, and comes underneath my arm. There you go. <clears throat> So if he does the other side, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and then 
You don't want to try that at all fast. I didn't trying to get the feel for it. Just pair up. You don't have to smash anybody. Yeah, just do it real light. So it's like, you know what I mean? Yeah, you can do it real light. And then you want to push it on the front of the Yeah. Oh, yeah.
I know it's fine. I know it's fine. I know it's fine. I know it's fine. I
So just for the just for the camera. Okay. Uh, I'll just go over one more time because I, I missed two key points on it for explanation. So when I go for this, I grab this, I want to rotate it as much as I can. So if I leave it rotated like this and I go, he see the bend in his arm. That makes it I still can put pressure and I can still move him. That's a lot harder. He can resist a lot more. Ideally when I do this, I want to rotate that arm so it's now extended. The second point is, I want to suck this into my belly as tight as I can. I don't want any room. I don't want any room here either. See how this, if you turn to the camera, see how there's room here, like some guys are doing like this. I suck my arm and I just dry it. You can see my hand here. I just, I fill that gap. So there's no, there's no play anymore. He doesn't have anywhere he can go. Now I just lower my leg and I'm going to chop like I have like a piece of wood. If you just stay right there, I'm like chopping in that motion. So if I drop down, he has really no choice to fall down the ground. The last part is, if I'm here, I can just take him down. If I really want to finish, I can step in front of him and pop him to finish it. All right. Cool. Next, next chain of move. Now, there's, this is what I would say is one of the most common takedowns in historical medieval battle. is just head and arm types. You know, the Muay Thai. But guys love to do the good old head and arm. And usually it's off a rail. You grab a rail, you grab a head and arm, and they get basic as anything, it kills people all day long, kills the best people. Um, so we need to know how to defend against it. Let's see there's three main four main defenses to it. A lot of it's got positioning. So to go over just the, the key points, we're gonna have a rail style. I'm going to lock up on his head, get it tight, and set my hips in. This is what I have a nice rail. I don't have to worry about falling over. Set my hips in as deep as I ever want because I don't have to worry about falling over. I'll even hook this leg, and I'll pop it. Even if he has, can somebody be a pretend rail for us? <laughs> Grab the rail. Um, if I come in here and he has a rail himself. I can still do this move, like because I'm not attacking his arm. I'm attacking his neck. That's the weak point. So I can still step in here. I grab his head, and I'll just wrench down. Now, so you, you can feel me coupling to his body here with my hips. Like that's the normal throw. I'm coupling into his body and picking him up bodily. With his arm on there, yeah, it's gonna be a fight. I might still rip him off, but I want to finish the day. Make sure I tuck in nice if I can up underneath his helmet and like extend his neck. And then he's gonna feel this. Feel how I'm just attacking directly in your neck now. Oh, I fell on my yeah. And I'm gonna drive into that. I'm gonna hold on to my rail. And I'm just gonna basically go until a lot of times this will choke guys too. Not intentionally, but they're strapped. But they'll just feel their neck going like this. And like have fun holding on because it's your you're pushing your hip into them, right? Yeah. Well I'm pushing you're it into them, but I'm trying everything. to sink all my weight into his actual you know, like okay. pressure into his neck and twist his head. Um, he'll feel it all in his neck. Um, like, uh, there's a couple of videos of me taking guys down. It doesn't look super dramatic. You'll just see him come to the rail. And I don't do this huge, like, ah! I just go, and they're holding on the rail, and I just go, and then they just fall off of it. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. He's looking to the rail with his other hand. He's not going to come down on top of him like that. So. Right, yeah, that's, that's, that's the key to that one. Um, open. If we're in an open field, I'll still do this. I just have to be careful about like seatbelt grab type suicide with me. Um, so if I'm here, I'm using this arm to like make sure he doesn't actually get these things. So I'll go here. Sometimes I use this as just a holder. But my buddy's post. I'll just come here and I'll sit here. I'll see how my face out wide. I'm just sitting here. I'm blocking him from doing anything crazy. I'm just waiting for my buddy to show up. And that's either a big X or a lot of times he's good at this. You run up and you kick him down into the hip. And it's not a side kick, it's a down into the line of their ankle kick. You're actually attacking their ankle, honestly, is what happens. That's like when the music drops in the highlight reel from iTalk 2016. <laughs> 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 On Mexico, you're right. Yeah. Well, that's a jump kick, too. When he kicks correctly, it will translate down. See, so watch his ankle even move if I kick down correctly. Oh, I didn't. That's the problem. <laughs> so if I kick down into him, 
He actually puts weight onto his leg. Yeah, rolls and now it has nowhere to go. Like, oh. if I just kick him to the side, he just picks his leg up and moves. So it'll just kind of like shove. But if I kick kind of at a down angle, it now weights down his leg. He has a really hard time picking it up, and then it wants to roll over his ankle. So he generally just falls over. The, only, the other option is driving to the front of the hip. We're driving the hip back off the feet. But yeah. getting that foot up and driving down with those kicks when you're trying to knock something over is huge. Um, but so that's kind of a, a general, just apply that as you can figure out. Yeah. And kicks aren't for everybody. Having your foot up this high is, if you're not comfortable there, don't, don't do it. Yeah. Uh, this is a little more advanced. <laughs> So I'm blocking out and I have this thing as I have my shield and my sword, right? I'm just pushing this away. I'm going to step in. So remember, there's a variation, right? There's the collar tied through. Super similar. I actually like that generally. Sometimes you just get into this really high lockup and he just feeds you his head. You're like, okay, well, I'm taking it. And you rip him down, but there's nobody out there to take. You can't, you can't grab a rail. Um, I'll make sure he doesn't. So what he wants to do is lock his arms and his weapon and just fall over with me a lot of times. So I don't want to let it. <laughs> so I'll block this, like nope, you don't get that. At the same time, I'm going to sit deep. See how I pop him up off the ground? So it's this step. See how I sit, sit my hips down? See, watch when I pop him up. You even you can see him hear him. Boom! <laughs> and so what it ends up looking like, is so I'm here, I pop him. And then I just let him go. I kind of held him up to be nice. Yeah. But I just pop, once I get him popped up, I just let him go. But the big thing is just don't let him latch on. Yeah, yeah. Well, ideally, if you're going to get that deep, I would most of us would face do out or I'd get to the rail. Usually, if I'm throwing that, I'm trying to hurry up and get a kill because I think our team's down or I need to make something happen. So it becomes these higher probability of dying with the guy throws, but you're trying to like hurry it up. To like rebalance the scales. It's just kind of like the decision in the at the time. Or maybe you think the guy's better than you, and if you like keep going, it's like, well, I'll try this high high risk throw. I kill him. That's awesome. But if we both die, it's still not really bad. It's all the equation of the battle. If you, however, you decide to. Figure so the question it out. is, what to do if someone actually gets the seatbelt hold on you? So if I'm trying to take you down, yeah. and you're wrapped around my waist. I'm gonna wait here, maybe wait for that friend, maybe break down that hand, maybe dig her with my palm hole and whatever shot. Yeah, wait, 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 wait for a wait for a buddy. <laughs> and then once it's time for the throw, I'll wait and I'll set it up. So like yeah, if he if he does end up locking something up, then I'm gonna base super hard, I'm gonna really attack this yeah. head and like really compromise his ability to do anything or see anything or make decisions. And he's gonna be here and he's basically he's likely gonna be suiciding me more desperately all the time. Um, but I'm going to keep in this good position. I'm just going to be watching. Like, sometimes it's just good to be patient. I, and, like, you can try to rip it off. Yeah. But sometimes you just get in this position where you're just like, oh, crap. Like, if he gets this big overhook, like, and uh, it gets super tight, like, I'd get in a really safe position, and I get in here and I drive him off. But it takes a little bit of time. Yeah, good plan. Don't panic. <laughs> so, that being one of the most common <clears throat> moves you'll ever see. How do you stop people from doing that? The first one is just body position alone. We might get in here and he throws this thing in. But guess what? If I stay high, I try to throw it. Like, you can't even like lock this thing up. Even if he doubles double when I'm here. Like, you have a really hard time actually moving. So there's a subtle difference. It's just like that Muay Thai punch. If I'm a little bit forward, ah, this is gonna be bad. No, real quick. And now I can't fight, I can't. Muscle that out. I mean, good body position. I can stop this. And the whole series of things I'm going to do from here now. So, and a lot of times this position comes like you're up on a rail, you're fighting somebody else, this other guy shows up, uh, and he wants to do this to you. So you keep good body position, and you have to do this fairly rapidly, but it becomes second nature. When those through some drills, it'll work on it. I'm going to come across it here. So I got the good body position. First of all, I come across the head. I come and I double up. So I'll do it even, I actually feed, I do this as a setup for guys all the time, before he even locks it in. I'll come up with like an underhook, and guess what that feeds? It feeds a, he's like, oh great, I got this uh, headlock. So that's exactly what I wanted. 
See my head pinching his arm? I'm, I'm trapping this on. I want it now. I'm not going to let it go. I trap this in. My hands come up in X. I'm running this line. Remember I was talking about finding lines when you push somebody back? It's the same thing. You find the line that they can't move in or the way you want them to go, and you lock that line down. It just comes out. You just have to play with your partner and feel it. Um, I'll drive along this line right here, doubled up. And see how I broke his position? This is a position for fun. This, this position here, who's going to win this, comes down to who has better body position. I create better body position for me because I give him bad body position. He wants to, yeah, he'll, he'll try to push this off and get in tight and try to compromise my neck by pulling it down. So I'll feed this thing, he grabs here, boom, I'm right here immediately. I'll, what I do is I go, my bread, bread and butter is go to a guillotine. And I'll feed this underneath right here. <clears throat> if I have a weapon, well, I should have a weapon. If it's an axe or something I can lock on, I like to lock onto it. And then just stick it into his face, not his neck, his face. And then just sit back into it. Now you've got him in a super controlled position. He's just like, oh crap. And it's no fun to be here. You can't really see anything. He's super open. Now I just position him where I want for my buddies. Um, well, this is if he's really tough. If I feel like I can take him, I just drop down and I'll rip him. Just rip, rip, rip. Rip, 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 rip. And 90% of guys are going to have the tough guys. I'll just lock that thing, wait for my buddies to show up, or wait five seconds and it sucks to be here they're like <laughs> and they're trying to do something and then I might just go for a trip or if I get them really down I'll go take a deeper trip um, the transitions of this I think you guys were working on like a they call it the Polish throw where you're grabbing some pauldrons it ends up being the same thing I'll transition I'll grab his pauldron or just grab guillotine with one arm pauldron on the other it's actually a really nice way to do it. Powerful, really hard to stop, it really gets it moving. It's actually one of my favorite ways to take that finish there. Rip, rip, spin. Pull back. Okay, so. Do you guys want me to throw, go through the chain or do you want to work on these things for my plane to the camera? What's your, what do you want to do? It's up to you guys. I can just go through the chain and see more. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. All right, so the next one, if he can, even if I drive his, his neck off, he's a good fighter and he's quick about it. He's going to step in and throw, let's step in deep throw. He's going to step in and throw anyways. Okay, so. Now, since I've got him in a semi-compromised position, when he steps, see that? He's stepping and he's giving away that, that see that base position? See if he's back, his foot's there. If I try to pull him back, because he's just on that leg. It's a nice post. When he steps forward to throw that, that's my move right there. Yeah, I do it all the time. It happens all the time. People think, oh, I'm just going to throw this head and arm. And you go here, and he goes to throw it. And then down he goes. And you can just press her and down and you keep it. It's tough. That's a time. Like, it's not really so much timing. You just do it when he steps. It's pretty easy, actually. You think it's the timing. It's not that hard. When he steps and he leaves that, that, that base of support, rip him down backwards. You have to do that. If you don't do that, he could finish the throw. <clears throat> um, next part. Um, if you do get compromised, it just happens. He ends up getting your head down a little bit. And he starts this. See my hand? See that hand right here? This is super important. He wants his hips nice and close to me, and he wants to pick me up off the ground and hug me. I don't want that to happen. I want to get out back in front of him. I'm going to push off this hip right here. I'm going to create that. I'm just going to step back to the front. So, boom. I don't get good position. I immediately just push this head out and fight that off. Yeah, no, it'll happen a lot. Like, that's like one of the basic sort of fences. Wow. The circle right to his front. If you're on a rail, this rail, he grabs it, he goes to throw you. Push off the head and circle to the front. He somehow just like locks my head. I can't get away, but he's on that rail. I keep pushing, keep circling, and I can work this off. It might take him more. You can always circle out to this front. And if he's a good guy, he'll do it more than once. He'll try to step in, I'll circle. He'll try to step in again, I'll circle. And you just have to keep. See, now I can just stay here. And I'll, I'll get out. And you can see right when it slips, too. Eventually, it just keeps sliding the head grip out. <sighs> if I can't actually latch down into his throat, which 
you shouldn't really be able to in a good helmet. It's going to slide eventually. Um, another defense is, <coughs> again, this is wrong rail. Adam's wrong on the rail. Guys, we'll get, this is a, this is like the rail grab. It's a temporary, like, oh, I'm about to go off balance. I need to save myself. Grab it then. But don't stay here. It's like I was saying, I just worked that guy's neck and eventually peeled off the rail. But he shows up and beats you down. <coughs> uh, this is just like, oh, this is, this is bad for you now. Don't grab this rail anymore. You use it for a second to, to keep from getting thrown initially. You stop the initial whip power. Now let go of the rail. Uh, do what I did before and just push the hips away and circle at the front. Or, I actually like this one a lot on the rail. He grabs imaginary rail. He goes to push. Just drive into him. Drive into him. And the rail will be here, right? Some of you pretend to be a rail. Just put your arms out or something. I'm going to drive him into the rail. It's much easier to see when there's a rail. I just drive into him and I circle in front of him like I was saying before. I go, remember that when I was pushing this? You go back into that same one, and you get into a guillotine. And if he's a sucker for the rail himself, he still has the rail. Remind us to show you that with the rail tomorrow, yeah. so if you have a rail together, and do that. Um, just the, the visual's a little cleaner. Just one more defense to this thing. That's pretty key. Do you want to see something? Uh, from stepping out in front. I'm trying to remember. Them. Oh, that's right. I remember. Come back. Yeah, this is the setup. I, I use this one in the path I use anyway. Um, he's here. He's got this headlock. And I'm resisting it, right? I'm in that good position. He's really rich on his headlock. Um, and I don't want him, I don't want him there anymore. Um, but so if you're if you, you feel him pulling, right? I feel him pulling, like pull me down like you're actually gonna try to. Just like without that hip pressure. Okay. Just look, I'll show you what I mean. Okay. A lot of guys will come in here and they'll just do this. Oh, okay. Just muffle you over. Yeah. And he's trying to sit there. You just set your hand here. So I have this underhook. I just transition it to sit right here. I've already made myself a little bit of a space. Now he pulls really hard down. Push him on. And like they'll do that. They'll fall right on their face sometimes. It's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> so that's the shove off. Um, there's one more. It's a counter. It's before they even get to the the headlock, the head, uh, the headlock at all. I have a, an underhook. I start to, you know, we're here. He's got like bicep control or something. Um, he starts to go to the headlock before he really locks it up. Can anyone tell what I should do here? Can you kind of see the moves? Pop your there? left shoulder up. Yeah, it's an underhook. It's an underhook throw. I'm just gonna rotate my head. I'm going to shoot this arm to the sky, and if I do it really mean, he flies really far. Um, so it's a setup too, I'll just be here and I'll, I'll do this on purpose as well. I'll just set up and be like, yeah, I can take my hip. Just, just whack it that side. Like as soon as you feel his arm come up, he just gave you that underhook to throw. His defense to that is if, if I come up here, and you're going to try and underhook me, and I come here, Try to underthrow me. I'm gonna remember that. Remember when I pulled the guy backwards on that headlock where I had that position? It's kind of the same thing. I just pulled back here, and that shuts that down. And then he can block out. Move on to wherever else. You're. That would be, I think, basically the chain of variations of headlock defenses and setups. Uh, get anything to add? Look, I don't do the headlock you know, as much as you do. Why does it? Why did I do that? I tend to mostly circle on. No, I didn't. Do you have a question? Nope, not at all. Okay. What's the big thing for making sure you don't fall down? Yeah. Every time you do this, like, oh, I'll see you guys. Yeah. Yeah, so they're falling down. Um, um, do it on the right. Like, so, like, if you do a headlock on them. Okay. All right. Keep so, them walking in, and when you bring them over, step wide and deep. Yeah. So here, I'll, I'll demonstrate. So. We have our weapons and stuff, and I throw this thing, and he'll like want to latch on a lot of times and pull me with them. So I'm just automatically just going to the center of his chest, and I'm just driving my weight here. And I've got this nice wide stance to heat me up. The backwards and forwards is I can just pull onto him if somehow I'm going backwards, that'll never happen. Uh, or I just drive into him if he pulls me forward. So I've got this nice uh, base. <clears throat>
if he tries. So, okay, some defenses. If he gets a really good headlock and you just know you can't last anymore, um, even if you don't have a full seat belt, and if you don't let him get this far into the end of you, that, that, that's going to be hard to see. Yeah. Before he gets that deep, watch this leg. It's going to sit here. This is a suicide move. Go with him here. Come on here, good. That's what it looks like. And that's good in the fight, too. It's like you'll end up on top of the guy. You yeah, see, the next thing would be him rolling into mouth. Yeah. Yeah. So, if you so that's good for pro fights when you got groundwork. Yeah. Are you still dead? Yeah, yeah you're dead. Yeah, you're back fully on the ground. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. but you yeah. get the, the honor card. Yes. Yeah. I'm on top. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you know, sometimes it just ends up right. You just, he's got you in a deep, deep headlock. Like, are you going to sit there and wait for the buddy to show up? Like, probably not. Yeah, like, if you know you're going to go, you might as well. Yeah. Might as well take him out. Well, well, like I was saying, yeah. there's battlefield decisions like, look, is this guy really a lot better than me and I just got him? And if I let him go, he's going to kill me in the next 10 seconds? Like, okay, then suicide, but then it's probably better for the team. Yeah. Come it comes down to your are. team captain and what your team philosophy is, but... It's not a good all the time move, but there are always going to be those moments. <laughs> yeah. Or you just know that you know you got three other guys; they have one other guy. Yeah, and you got looking around. Like, just yeah. Like, you, you, you just hang out. Yeah. Or you have to break the tension. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Well, headlock stuff. Or headlock stuff for like getting out of clinches for sure. Because I know a lot of times I'll. I'll I won't feel stuff and I'll go for a throw and all right. of a sudden you feel that something was, they had something and you go over with them. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. No, you know, like you're like, oh yeah, no, I've got that so, back and you right. go for that. If you're in something. this tight and any clinch, there's a good chance they're going to have something hooked into you. Yeah. 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 So, so any, you don't have to wear this in your Anytime you're like chest to chest, hip to hip, you're likely going to die with them. Yeah. yeah. And this goes back to kind of getting yeah, Making um, this amount of space where you're controlling the elbows, the head, using positions is huge. When you have that amount of space between you, you can usually feel pretty safe to start and execute the throw.